Welcome back to yet another edition of What's the Story here on The People Chronicles. My name is Joe Painter, and I have a return guest just because she's a very special lady <laughs> and very gifted and talented. Cindy Ross, thanks for joining us. Oh, here on my the People pleasure, Chronicles. Joe. You know, it's always, always good to see you. And I, I mean that. You're hard to track down because you're a busy lady. You do a lot of traveling. <laughs> and that's, well, it's been your job for a long time. You're a journalist. You're um, a magazine editor or writer. consultant and writer. Um, you blog. You have cindyrosstraveler.com, right? Yep. You got to go there. And you've written a number of books. And the first one I remember is when you hiked the Appalachian Trail. That's been in print for 35 years, a woman's journey. Is it that journey? long yeah. ago? Darn it. <laughs> it's been 40 years uh, since I hiked the trail. It seems like 10, you know? <laughs> I feel the same. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that was the first one. And, and there are a number that have come in between. Um, the, the next one that really captured my imagination is the, the story of your journey on the Continental Divide with the llamas. Scraping heaven. Scraping heaven, yes. But now this is the latest. The world is our classroom. And, and I want to leave this up because I don't want you to forget this title. You've got to get this book. There's something a little bit different about this one and maybe more unique and special. So rather than me try to capture it, what is special about this one? Well, it's 25 years of raising and educating my children alternatively, using the whole world pretty much as their classroom, uh, emphasizing that uh, in the natural world because we believe that so much can occur when you're outside in nature, Dif all different layers of learning and your senses stimulated and your creativity going off the charts and just all kinds of wonderful things happen when you're learning outside. You know, you mentioned that in a previous conversation that we had, talking about um, very generically, well, take them outside and everything's stimulated and things just happen. But it's clearly articulated here with very specific examples on this particular trip, this is what was happening, this is how old the children were, and these are things they learned. And what was an eye-opener for me is this wasn't necessarily intentional from the get-go. No, uh-uh. Um, we decided to teach with intent probably when they were pretty young, but the book, um, probably the dream didn't happen until about 10 years ago. When I started to see that I was able to walk my talk. And because the kids were raised, like we homeschooled, they were in public school for seven years and then they taught themselves and then transitioned right into Temple Honors uh, in Philadelphia. But when I was seeing what they were turning out to be like, and I thought, okay, I, I really know, know something here that's worthwhile that I can share with parents to help them. And one of the neat things about this, Joe, is that because my kids always wrote about all of their adventures or they kept a journal or every experience they had, they wrote about, their writings are in the book. So from 12 to 28, you see excerpts and essays. So they're, they're showing how much they learned. It isn't just this parent saying this is a great idea. I was very impressed, Cindy. Um, I think it was uh, Sierra, she was chronicling a story and you took it right out of her journal uh, when the heron was found. Oh. And then she talked about um, her experiences and her, her love of nature and why it was important to her. And, and what caught my attention, I think she was 17 at the time, right. um, extremely articulate, well written, I'm thinking who writes like that at 17? And the level of empathy. The empathy was beyond, beyond imagination. And prior to getting to that part in the book, you talked about different experiences you had, and you pointed out this happened, and it, it deepened their empathy on, on multiple occasions. And so you said it. And then you get to this point in the book where Sierra, in her own words at 17, is writing it, and it's profound. I thought that that would be the most powerful part of the book was My to goodness. hear it from them. And to see it evolve to whether, you know, it started when they were real little and we went swimming with manatees and saw all the, 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 the propeller wounds all yeah, over them, yeah, you know, yeah. things like that. And as I was writing this book too, Joe, I realized that that it isn't this body of knowledge that's most important that we give our kids or schools give their kids, but it's what kind of people they turn out to be if they're good and they're kind and they care and nothing else matters. doesn't matter how brilliant they are if they don't have right. a heart. That, right. And I think that's our job mostly as parents and grandparents is to raise kids that care. And I believe 
that as parents and grandparents, we certainly do try to do that um, with whatever resources and tools we have. But I think what this underscores and your experience underscores is how, how powerful a tool that nature is just by sharing nature and the natural world with our kids. They develop, you're encouraging empathy as a parent, you're teaching, you're modeling, but they really develop their own connection. And I don't know of anything quite as powerful as that. No, I agree with you. I think that when they have experiences like this and they learn like this and they learn as they live that it just, you know, becomes part of who they are. Mm -hmm. It's not like any kind of knowledge that they would read in a book or, or experience in a classroom that, you know, when we live our, our, our learning, it becomes part of who we are. And, and I think that's the most important thing because, because I think we need to uh, raise lifelong learners, people that fall in love with learning so yeah. that they learn their yeah. whole lives. It isn't like school's this horrible place you go and when you're done, you're done with it. You know, no, you know, we have so many problems on the planet and we have to raise kids that, that have a passion to help make things a, a better place. And, and you can't do that if you're if you're if you don't care and and that you're not in love with learning. So that's part of why I wanted to write this book because I don't think it stops when they're you know when they leave school. What you just said reminds me of your story of is it the Navajo Indians? Right. And the seven generations. Can you recap that for a moment? Um, well, the the Navajo believe that we should conduct our lives in, in the sense that we think seven generations ahead and what we're doing now impacts not just our kids or our grandkids, but seven more generations. And that's, we, we learned that when we went through the Navajo Nation on our bicycles and talked to them about that. But it's, it's a way of, of thinking that, that we don't often you know, embrace. I used to think, until I met you, Cindy. <laughs> that I would go on vacation. And I'm not a big fan of, um, you know, the all-inclusive, so where you just yeah. stay in this little enclave and, and you Insulated. mix with other tourists. Yeah, I really like to get into the neighborhoods and meet the people. And I used to think I was pretty good about that until I read this book and I think I didn't come close. <laughs> but in, that, in the Navajo story, um, I think you were looking for a place to, to pitch a tent, so to speak, but yet you were on the reservation and you met a woman and, and she was wonderfully kind and welcomed you to their home. And in that particular incident or uh, vacation, if you will, these are vacations, kind of, um, <laughs> uh, you, you, uh, your kids learned what is poverty. Right, and what's a want and what's a need. Yeah. You know, we, and we would have these discussions after we went through this experience because they always thought that we were poor and compared to some, a lot of people we are, but we were rich in lots of other ways. But there was all these discussions about like what's a want and what's a need because their kids gave us these, these dirty little broken toys as a gift when we left. and. And we thought that was, you know, touching. But we were, my kids at six and eight were trying to understand this, you know. And they, they had uh, like their their clothesline was a piece of um, barbed wire, and that's yeah. what they played volleyball with, you know. And so there was, there's so many stories in here. Like we went to Thailand to visit a friend. Um, my my daughter was only 13, and she was banging the the pillow on our sofa, which was old. It was my th parents, and we got them after they died. And and the the foam had deteriorated, so it's poofing out. And she's sitting there whacking the sofa, and she goes, "Don't you think we ought to get a new sofa, Mom?" And I said, "Well, we could, but or, or we could go to Thailand, and you could ride elephants on your birthday in the hill country, and sea kayak with monkeys in the lagoons." And she said. I think the sofa is just fine. And that was a good lesson for her to see that. And she chose it. Yes, everyone has a certain amount of money. And if we have anything left over that's extra, we wanted to show our kids the world and the people and the cultures. And right. that we don't travel because we're wealthy, but this is just what we choose to do with our little bit of excess money. But she learned, you know, what was really important and necessary to be happy, and mm -hmm. she wanted to go to Thailand instead of getting a new dumb sofa. Again, I, the want and need, and I was I was smiling to myself as I read that story because, I, you know, my kids are young teenagers. I need you know, the Calvin Klein shirt or something like that, and I and I used to say, you want it or you need it. You right. need it. You want it. So um, the other thing that happens 
in this book. Because as we talk about this, you might be listening to this conversation and watching Cindy and going, well, sure, I, I, I don't have the wherewithal to get to Thailand or to go to Myanmar or to go to uh, the, the Yucatan Peninsula and all these wonderful places you've been to. But you take time in this book after each story or during each story and you make it easy to connect. Well, maybe you can't go here, but you can do this. Right. So there's opportunities right here in our own backyard. And as, as a mom, I'm my mom now, um, I'm really quite anxious to see my grandchildren again because I made notes of different resources that you offered in the book that I know are available here. Um, they used to live in Colorado, they've moved. And every time I go to Colorado, I picture the wagon train. And it always, I, I can't conceive of it. And I was quite surprised when you have a, a portion of this book donated to, is it the Oregon Trail? Where you could actually Right, there's a take? company, there's a company that, that leads um, wagon trains and they're not like the rubber tires, it's metal. Right, and, it's real. We, we went out for three days right on the actual Oregon Trail and that was, that was inspired by reading the Little House on the Prairie books when Sierra was a kid. So there's all the connections And anyone can do that. Yes, you know? yes. And, and I didn't think of that as, as my own kids and my grandkids, they're reading this book. You then went the next step and went, well, let's make it come real and what's here. And so it's full of resources and you offer your insight and experience, um, not only on those tangible resources, but also the intangible one. It was very heartwarming to read the portion of the book where you um, realized and understood that everybody in this family unit of yours is a little bit different and their needs are different and, and how the compromise was, is made and you meet those needs. Um, so it, it can be um, heavens, family counseling as well or, or ideas as how to uh, work as a family unit. And together. you know, one thing that's great about spending so much time like this together, disconnected from technology, is you start to talk to each other, you start to know each other, the kids start to trust their parents um, so that when they get older, they'll have a different relationship and go to them for help and guidance instead of not wanting to be with their parents. And, and that's really important because when you share adventures outside like this, it is a really special bond that happens that can't happen when you're watching a TV show together. Right, right. And it's nothing you can buy, but it is something you can live and give. And it's, I, I believe, as much a gift to me, the parent or grandparent, as it is to the child. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we're learning right alongside them and having this wonderful adventurous life. There's one part that I talk about, about pushing your comfort zones because kids will always want to have adrenaline or, you know, take risks. But as parents, you know, we can show them how to like whitewater raft or climb mountains instead of uh, driving fast and experimenting with drugs. I mean, parents need- Oh, calculated risk. Yeah, risk. all the help they can get to find alternatives to these needs that these kids naturally have growing up. You know, we can show them other safer, healthier ways to have adrenaline and, and have risks, take risk. I thought I knew a lot until I read this book and I've, I've learned more. So it's not just a, a tale and an exciting journey about a, a family's life, uh, but it's full of resources um, for grandparents, for parents, and, and for teachers too, because there's little ways. If you can't do the whole package, it's okay. Right. And you're very, just you're do, very keenly aware of that. Yes. So there's tips. When I wrote Scraping Heaven and we took our kids across the Rockies for 3,000 miles, it wasn't that I wanted or thought anyone would ever do that with their kids. But if we could do that with babies with 100 diapers, you too can go, go to a state park and camp by your car. You know, it's like this is, this is on one side, but, you know, you can become inspired and just do something with them. Baby steps. Yeah. It's a powerful book and an important gift, especially in this world of technology and connectedness. Parents have so many challenges now that raise yes, their kids. Sure do. More sure than do. ever before. So this is a gift and I and I encourage you to go ahead and get the book and give it if you if you have great Christmas. Yeah, exactly. It is a great Christmas yeah. gift for parents. So Cindy, thanks for writing it. Thanks for sharing it and thanks for sharing yourself and your energy. Yes, Appreciate my it. My pleasure. Thank it you. It is. The world is our classroom. Get your copy. Thanks.